Hi, my name is John McMaster, and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to digitize integrated circuits from microscope images by using the Inkscape Vector Graphics Drawing Program. For this tutorial, we will be using Inkscape 0.48, which is the version that comes with Ubuntu 12.04 LTS. Start by bringing up the Layers menu by pressing Ctrl Shift L. By default, there is one empty layer called Layer 1. So the first thing we'll want to do is go to File, Import, and select our image to be imported. For this tutorial, we will be using the Commodore Business Machines 65 CO2 top metal image to digitize the first two metal layers of this chip. Here, we are given two options. We either can link the image, which makes it external to our image, uh, to our SVG file, but takes up less space, or we can choose to embed it, in which case the two files will essentially be stored together, but will take up more disk space. Since these images are rather large, I'm going to choose to link it rather than embed it. Now, because this is a small image, it didn't take very long to load. But larger images can take up significant computer resources, and you may find you want to reduce them to the lowest possible resolution to make Inkscape responsive. We have the image imported, but if you hide the layer, you'll notice that our image is much larger than our document size. So, let's fix this. Go to File, Document Properties, hit Resize for Page to Drawing or Selection, and now if we close this window and hide the layer, zooming out, we will see that our canvas now matches our image size. Before we begin digitization, let's first adjust some preferences to make the process a little easier. Go to File, Inkscape Preferences, and first check that Rectangle is Last View Style. Confirm the same setting for the Pencil, Pen, and Calligraphy options. Then close it so we can begin the process. Next, let's prepare our layers. First, double click on Layer 1 and rename it Top Metal image. Then let's create layers for M2, the top metal layer, M1, and the V is between M2 and M1. The other layers, poly and active, although we may be able to see them, uh, we won't be digitizing them, at least in this segment. Next, select the zoom tool so we can select our region of interest. We're choosing this section because, while simple, it demonstrates all of the concepts you need to know in order to proceed. After zooming in to our region of interest, let's adjust the zoom to 150%, then expand the layer subpane so that we can see all of them. As you look at this, some areas might not be obvious whether they are M1 or M2. For example, if we zoomed in on this, could you, from looking at simply this section of the image, discover which one of these was M1 and M2. There are slight color differences that may allow you to do this, but generally this is somewhat hard. Instead, zooming back out, if we take a look at this, we can infer that this is M1 because we can see the vias down to the active areas. And therefore, because this transitions from one layer to another, we can infer this is M2. This is how we begin digitization. Start with the easy sections, and then make inferences based on what we've learned so far. Select M1 by left-clicking on it, if not already selected. Then select the pen tool and find a corner of a polygon you'd like to draw. Left-click and then move to find the midpoint of the next edge. Left-click and then repeat again, finding the midpoint for the rest of the edges. When you get to the final edge, rather than clicking on the midpoint, left click on the original point in the polygon. You have now drawn your first polygon. Now, repeat this process for a few more polygons to get the feel of it. The remaining polygons in this area all have overlap, but for our purposes, this really isn't any different. For example, this one right here is M1 over here and overlaps with M2. However, there really is no difference and we just begin digitizing just like we did before. And 
I'm doing the same thing for this one. This next polygon is actually part of a much larger polygon, which may be intimidating at first. However, we don't have to draw the entire polygon at once. Let's start by drawing the smaller polygon, and then we will join it into a much larger polygon. The distance that we go out to that area is somewhat arbitrary, because in a minute we're just going to join two polygons together to uh, basically just remove this area. So let's just draw kind of a dummy polygon and pretend this was the much larger one. Now if we press S for select, and then shift left click on both polygons, and go to path, union, they are now joined into a single polygon. Repeat this process for the other polygons to form an arbitrarily large polygon one bit at a time. As we draw polygons, we may occasionally make mistakes and put them in the wrong layer. For example, say we drew something as M1 and thought it was M2. Let's take this polygon and if we wanted to shift layers, all we'd have to do is go to uh, layer and move selection to layer below. And now, if we hide the layers, we can see it's been moved to M2. Another thing that we should do is lock layers that we're not editing at this time. That way, we can't accidentally click on them and draw them in the wrong layer. Another thing that can be helpful to do is to change the transparency settings on the layers so it's more clear where we are and what we've drawn. If, for example, we take M1 and change the layer to 40%, we can now see what we've drawn over as well as what we've drawn. Occasionally, as we draw polygons, we may make errors that we need to correct. Take the selection tool and click on the polygon that we want to correct. Double click on it and left and shift click to select the points we want to correct. Now, while holding control so that it snaps, you can slide that up and down to make it continue to keep at right angles while moving to the new desired position. Release and press escape to clear the selection. You've now corrected that polygon. Now with M1 done in this section, let's move on to M2. Select M2, lock M1 because we no longer wish to edit it, unlock M2, let's change the transparency to 40% just as we did for M1, and finally let's select a different color. Traditionally metal is represented as blue, so I'm just going to choose a different shade of blue then we can simply proceed to do the same sort of drawing that we did for the previous layer. Clicking at midpoints and closing the polygon. The last thing we need to do at this part of the image is to figure out where the views are between M1 and M2. Now you'll notice there are a number of views between M1 and M2 in your design, but there are also quite a few between M1 and active. You, as a digitizer, will need to figure out which of these are which as you're going through the image. One way to do this is to think of this in terms of design rule checking, as would be done when designing an integrated circuit. For example, we should only find M1, M2 vias when there's both M1 and M2 that cross. Similarly, we can look over here and we know that these are not M1, M2 vias because there is no M2 in this area. Now, you do have to think carefully in some situations. For example, over here, while there is M1 and M2 crossing, there's also an active area that we can't see, at least in this image, and so these are actually M1 to active vias. However, as you have more images and delayer the chip, this should become a little more apparent. One reason, though, that we can tell is by looking at this, we can see that these vias are smaller than these vias. Therefore, one heuristic that we can use is by looking at the size of the via, we can assign it from one layer to another. These sort of uh, heuristics will vary considerably from one chip to another, so think carefully as you begin to digitize the chip and make informed decisions about what assumptions you can make to help the digitization process. Start drawing a via by selecting the Rectangles and Square tool and the color black. Find a via that you'd like to use as a template and drag while holding the control key to keep the via square. When you're satisfied with the size, release the keys and place the via down. 
Complete the array by copy and pasting template via. Now, you may notice that although vias are very regular in nature in their grid pattern, we kind of have some sloppy XY offset. If these offsets are not important for your purposes, you may simply leave it as is. Otherwise, you may either adjust it up here, investigate the Inkscape snap options, or consider post-processing the image file after you've digitized the SVG. To top it off, let's add the other M1, M2 via in our region of interest. Of course, there are more M1, M2 vias over here, but we're not focusing on this section of the chip right now. This concludes the polygons we are going to add for this tutorial. Once you wanted to do the other layers, simply import an image just like we did previously and align it to this one by panning it around. Then lock it in place and add additional layers for active and poly just as we did for M1, M2, and the vias. Then you should be able to complete it, draw the additional polygons, and get the entire chip layout. I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for listening.